What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my first impression and analysis of the Ascended Celica and Ymir banner. So here we have Ascended Celica with a bit of inspiration from Alm's armor and uh, she is a colorless infantry mace this time around. So this Ascended unit uh, is going to be giving you the floret when you summon her and she's actually not the main focus of the banner. So here she's got Mila's Testament as her preferred weapon. This is a 14 might weapon which gives you minus on special cooldown. It also gives you plus 6 attack and speed in combat. And she also has Null Guard. And she can get true damage based on 10% of foe's attack stat. So it's not going to be too huge amount of a true damage. But still it's pretty nice to have. And then finally she can have the miracle effect if she has got 25 or more HP. So this can make Celica definitely like a magical uh, Cyan Leaf. Cyan Leaf is definitely a pretty fun unit because of the fact that he does have that Miracle effect. So similarly, Celica is going to be able to survive with this Miracle and pretty much be in the Soul of Zofia range even against some fatal hits. And because Celica is going to be pretty fast and because she has got no follow up with Soul of Zofia, it is going to be pretty easy for her to survive most encounters unless the opponent has got some kind of brave hit which just puts her at 1 HP and then kills her off. So that is always going to be something that could happen but overall she is definitely going to be fun with this miracle effect. She does have Moonbow and Life and Death. Life and Death is going to be a bit weird because it does reduce her bulk. So she's a lot more likely to just fall at 1 HP and then get taken out by the second hit. So some other slotty skills could actually be much better on Celica, but Life and Death can definitely work if you're trying to run her with an AoE special. She does have Soul of Zofia just like Legendary Celica, and this does have Desperation and Null Follow built into it. So falling into the Desperation range is a bit annoying for Legendary Celica, but not for this Celica because of the Miracle built into her weapon. And then she brings a new skill with Infantry Null Follow Up. So this is a supportive skill which only infantry units can have and only infantry units can benefit off of this. So unlike legendary Violet's drive null follow up, this is not going to be taken advantage by the armor, cavalry or flying units. Only infantry allies within two spaces of this unit can get the null follow up which is still really good and it's definitely going to be a pretty nice support effect if you try to use an infantry unit without null follow up in their slot B. So you can definitely free up their slot B skill and you can just run some damage reduction skill or a lull skill or a tempo skill on that kind of infantry unit and still get infantry null follow up from their ally. But still you have to be within two spaces to get this effect. So it's not exactly like Fallen Lilith's effect. Uh, still it's a pretty nice support effect. So Ascended Celica is overall a pretty solid unit. And she could be a pretty good unit to be used in Aetherate's defense, especially with Bridal Catria because of her survivability and it does have good synergy. Um, like her weapon does have good synergy with Medius. So she can quad attack and a lot of times survive because of this miracle effect and the fact that she's got null follow up in her slot B. So definitely a pretty nice unit and she does have good art as well. And this is the stats which I'm expecting on Celica. I think she's going to be mainly offensive with high attack and speed which is expected out of her and I don't think she's going to be having much of a bulk. Um, she doesn't really get any kind of bulk from her weapon either, only the offenses. So Celica is this kind of glass cannon which has got the miracle effect which can be really fun. So that is Ascended Celica and then our next unit is actually Shadows of Valentia Est. So we have the full white wings from Shadows of Valentia now in the game. So Est is a Lance Flyer this time and her art is definitely much better than uh, you know Resplendent Est or even the regular Est in my opinion. She has got Tri-Edge Lance which has Cantor remaining plus one built into it. So basically it does have a Neo Trace skill. So whatever movement you're going to be having left is going to be given to you as your Cantor movement. And this is really good because she doesn't really have to run a Neo Trace skill in her slot B. And this weapon does give her plus three attack and she can get plus five to all of her stats in combat and she can get the true damage based on 20% of her resistance. And finally, she gets 40% damage reduction on foe's first attack. So she's gonna be having good survivability, but keep in mind that she's only gonna be getting the damage reduction on foe's first attack. So if she gets doubled or if the foe has got some auto follow up, then she's gonna be taking full damage on their second hit. Of course, you can do fun things like have Speed Smoke 4 to stack up the damage reduction. And then she has got a new line of skill in Flow Feather 3. So this is basically a resistance counterpart to Flow Flight with Spring Maria had. So what it basically does is that it's only gonna be active in the player phase and it gives you partial non follow up. 
which means that he can bypass the follow-up negation skills of the opponents, which means that he can easily double any kind of opponent. And if your speed is equal to or more than foe speed minus 10, then he can deal 70% true damage based on the difference. And you also get 70% damage reduction. The 70% damage reduction which you get out of the difference is actually the flat damage reduction, which means that it is not affected by Deadeye Lethality or any of the damage reduction piercing skills. So it is a flat damage reduction like Spring Maria's weapon. But don't get confused that Esther is like a Lance Spring Maria or anything like that. She's definitely not as good as Spring Maria because, because the damage reduction that she has in her weapon is actually pierceable uh, by Deadeye, Lethality and all of those skills. Spring Maria's weapon actually gives her the flat damage reduction. S is still pretty good as a Lance Flyer, but still there's a lot of competition. I think the fact that she's got Kanto in her weapon is definitely pretty good so that her slot B is a bit more open and she can run different skills. Flow Feather is definitely a pretty interesting skill, but only the units who have got good enough speed and resistance are going to be able to make use of this kind of skill. So if you're a Claire user or Sita user, then Flow Feather is actually a pretty good skill for you. For the stat spread of Est, I think even though she's got attack resistance push 4, um, she's overall going to be fast. I don't think that she's going to be very slow because Flow Feather does need your unit to be speedy. So I think S is actually going to be the fastest she has ever been. And she's obviously going to be having good attack stat and good resistance is also needed for Flow Feather. But I don't think it's going to be too high. I think 36 is what came out when I try to calculate based on this trailer. So something worth noting is that all of the Shadows of Valentia sisters have Kanto in their weapon. Um, so S has got Kanto remaining plus one. Shadows of Valentia Pala has got Kanto too. So probably Shadows of Valentia Katria is going to be having some kind of Kanto in her weapon if I'm, if this is a pattern if at all. So yeah, that is S. Not exactly the most insane unit, but still pretty good if you're a big S fan or if you want to get the flow feather for one of your investment uh, units. And then we have the four star demote of this banner and that is going to be Kamui. So fun thing is that Leon, Valbar and Kamui all are demotes. So you can actually build up all three of the friends uh, quite easily from the normal summoning pool. Um, so Kamui has got upfront blade plus which does give you plus five speed and attack in the combat. And it also has debuff neutralization on your attack and speed. This means that you should not be running a unity skill with this kind of weapon because then your unity skill is not going to be giving you the unity effect whatsoever. Uh, so this could be a good skill to be used in Aetherweight's offense especially on a sword unit who doesn't really have a preferred weapon or maybe they have a preferred weapon but it's really old. So this could be a pretty nice skill honestly to be had. I could see myself giving this weapon to my Lin uh, because Lin's refine is really old. So some of the older units can definitely appreciate the extra offenses out of this weapon and the deep of neutralization. And he's got Luna, Speed Defense Ideal and Attack Defense Oath. Speed Defense Ideal 3 is a pretty good skill if you're trying to fodder off your U uh, for the tier 4 version of the skill and the Rouse Attack Speed 4. So that could make for good fodder. And Attack Defense Oath, we have seen this before on a free to play unit like Kaiza. So not exactly the most unique thing, but if Kamui ends up having Attack Defense Oath at 4 star, then it could be a pretty nice budget skill. And of course, a pretty good uh, fodder when we get Attack Defense Oath 4. So that is Kamui, another Sword Infantry unit as a demote. For Kamui, I think that he's going to be having good speed. Obviously low resistance because of his fear of Necro Dragons. So we've definitely gotten quite a few uh, demoted Sword Infantry units to pick from. Yenfei is still the better one because of his preferred weapon. So yeah, that is Kamui, the demote of this banner. And the final unit and the star of this banner is actually the new Fire Emblem Heroes OC, Ymir. So she is a green cavalry uh, dragon, which is definitely pretty unique. There's no green cavalry dragon. We have red, blue, colorless with Niffle and Muspel. Uh, but so far none of them have been green and Ymir is the only one and she's honestly pretty unique because of the support that she can provide. Her weapon is also supportive so that is something I like and this weapon provides her with plus 3 attack and if any kind of assist skill is used by her or if she's the target of an assist skill then she can restore 10 HP to herself and the allies within 2 spaces and also gets rid of any kind of penalty on those allies. So this is of course a top tier effect in Aetherate's defense where isolation is going to be present, where people are going to be using the debuffs against your team. So the fact that you can get rid of the penalties on your allies just with the help of the assist skill 
uh, is absolutely amazing and it's a really good supportive effect. And then with this weapon she can get plus 5 to all of her stats and also gets an auto follow up. So that is pretty good because I don't think she's going to be very fast. So the auto follow up at least gives her a better combat than you know someone like Muspel for example uh, who doesn't have anything like that. And then she's got Rally Up Attack Plus which is perfect for Aetherate's defense usage. Which is going to be able to affect multiple allies at the same time just like her supportive effect. And then she's got Attack Resistance Near Trace which is going to be only appreciated by a few of the units who don't have any kind of speed and are mainly focused on attack and resistance. And then finally she's got Ever Living Domain as her exclusive slotsy skill which is going to be the main selling point of this unit. So this has got Joint Drive Defense and Joint Drive Resistance built into it and it also has Joint Drive Miracle. And that miracle is only going to be active if your unit is at 75% HP or above. So that makes her into a really really solid Aetherate's defense unit. And especially really good in the dark season where Medius is going to be protecting you from the bold tower. So she is going to be a pretty nice unit to be used with Bridal Catria and Catria Bolts in general. Uh, the point of contention I have with this kind of slots skill is the fact that this skill does not say that the HP should be at start of combat. So once Ymir actually comes out, this is something we'll have to test. If this is, uh, you know, at start of combat miracle, like with Divine Tearfing, or if you just hit down the enemy below 75% HP with your first attack, then they don't get miracle. So that is something I'm curious about uh, because the wording of this skill is a bit tricky and it's different than, uh, you know, the weapons that we had before, like Divine Tearfing. Or even the weapon of Sai and Leaf. So maybe they could have changed something. Again, uh, we'll have to test this out. But even then, this is still a pretty good effect, giving you the miracle. And as someone who uses a lot of Gale Force, yeah, this is definitely pretty annoying. But this pretty much means that having someone with AoE special is going to be helping you, uh, you know, just chip down the HP of many of the units at the same time. And keep in mind that this kind of miracle is going to be getting absolutely bypassed and shredded by Legendary Nana and also by Green Feud uh, because Green Feud is going to be effective on Ymir here. So definitely a pretty interesting slot to skill and I can see a lot of competitive players just sparking her because she's going to be amazing for Aether Raids and for Summoner Duels. The Miracle effect cannot be underrated whatsoever and it does provide you with good survivability and also prevents you from getting one shot. So that is always really good especially with the kinds of nukes we have nowadays. Um, so yeah, Ymir in my opinion is pretty much the best unit on this banner and the unit that most people are going to be sparking. And this banner is going to be giving us Atlas as an instant demote. So he's going to be appearing in the Forging Bonds. And here we can see that he appears to have Stout Axe, which is basically the Axe variant of Stout Lance. Stout Lance does give you plus 5 attack and defense in combat and also 50% damage reduction on foe's first attack. So Stout Axe is going to be functioning similarly, which means that Atlas is probably not going to be the fastest Axe Infantry unit. So he's going to be like a Baltus, I think, pretty much. We know that he has got Soul here. And then we also have Brigand Boss as the Grand Hero Battle unit from this banner. And funnily enough, before this banner, Brigand Boss was actually the most wanted Echoes unit that was not already present in Fae. So he did get 599 votes and he was at 165 position. So Brigand Boss is actually someone that a lot of people did want and he is the Grand Hero Battle unit. Would be kind of funny if he ends up getting a preferred weapon when many of the Grand Hero Battle units just got robbed of them. Uh, which is exactly why I think he's going to be having a preferred weapon. Um, so Brigand Boss is basically just a generic brigand that you face in Alms Route and he has taken like Silk captive. He's nothing really too special and uh, you know that's exactly why he got memed pretty much. So yeah that is gonna be our Grand Hero battle. A lot of people did uh, you know want Nui Baba or Jeddah but I guess we'll have to wait on those as uh, Brigand Boss is gonna be showing up first. And like I said there are no playable Axe units in Shadows of Valentia. Axe is only there for the enemy unit. So Brigand Boss is probably gonna be having an Axe as well so He's another Axe Infantry unit out of this batch along with Atlas. So yeah, that is going to be my first impression and analysis. Uh, definitely Sparkworthy Banner if you care about Ymir. 
and a sun itself is also pretty solid so let me know in the comments what you think about this banner and if you enjoyed this video then make sure to leave a like and a comment and if you really really enjoyed you could always support me directly by using super thanks or by becoming a youtube member and for more free videos make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Nui Baba and Jeddah, still waiting to get into Fae. So, with that, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.